Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I'm interviewing Fred Silva, a student of mine in my program, New Sound. Fred immediately stood out to me as a new student in my program. He was someone that was ready to accept a challenge, especially when it came to English. Fred is an entrepreneur and he has his own English podcast where he interviews all kinds of awesome teachers and English speakers about their journey. In this interview, I'm excited for you to get to know Fred even better as he talks about overcoming challenges, getting out of your comfort zone, and what it truly means to show up in English. Fred also interviewed me on his channel, so if you want to check out that interview, I'm going to add the link in the description below. All right, let's dive into the conversation with Fred. Hello, 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 Fred. How are you doing? Hello, Hadar. I'm doing great. How about you? I'm doing fantastic. Very excited to have you here and to talk to you about your English journey. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so happy and excited about it too. Cool. So why don't you quickly, I did introduce you, but I would love for you to tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do, and how you started with your English work. Oh, good, good. Well, I'm Fred Silva. I'm from Brazil and uh, I'm an entrepreneur and in the digital marketing field. And I'm passionate about the English uh, since I start to learn it. So I, I got passionate about it. And uh, right now I am helping other people to gain confidence and speak English better. So I'm not an English teacher, but I am a person that encourages other people to speak about English. I have a, a YouTube a channel, a, a podcast on YouTube, and I have been helping people to, you know, to improve their confidence, their, a few aspects of their English. And I am studying English since 2018. Um, mm -hmm. I decided to, because of, of work, I was, I want to, to get clients outside of, of Brazil. And then I, I decided to start to, to study Spanish and English, mm -hmm. but I fall in love with English. And I, <laughs> I noticed that, yeah, English is kind of a passion. I need to do something in this field too, because for me, it's a, I love to, you know, to, to talk to people and you know to use English on a daily basis. So this is a little bit about my my journey. And mm -hmm. since 2018, I I'm learning English. I'm speaking and trying to improve. And uh, it's a a long uh, journey. So I'm in the middle of this journey, and I am so happy to be here with you uh, in this podcast in this interview uh, because I I love to challenge myself. And for me to be here is a Good challenge. It's a big challenge. So you, you like challenges, right? Because, for example, you have a YouTube channel where you interview um, teachers and colleagues and content creators about English. What made you decide to start to put yourself out there and become a content creator? Yeah, the first thing was helping people. I noticed that when I help somebody else, I learn more. And when I do something for uh, another person, uh, that a good things come back to me. So, and my English was improving because I, I'm like encouraging people. I was like helping people to improve. And I know I decided to to start the YouTube channel because I want to give others the perception that everybody can speak English. Because I'm I'm a shy person. I am that guy that uh, when I was a kid that. Uh, sit in the front row and didn't talk with anybody because I was so shy. And when I started to develop my communication skills, I noticed that, oh, speaking is good. Communication is important. So I, I mm -hmm. just start to improve my communication and my life started to improve it too. Mm. So when I noticed that I, I can help other people to, to improve their English uh, and I will be improving my, my own English, I will be improving my own life. So I, I decided to, to start the, the channel because I noticed that I, I could help people and I could help myself too. And I want to, as, as you mentioned, I love challenges and I challenge myself to interview the 
greatest teachers on the internet. So this is the reason I interview you in my podcast. I interview uh, Teacher Tiffany, that's a great teacher also. Uh, Amazing. Veronica, and I'm in the middle of this challenge. So this year, I want to interview a lot of uh, the best English teachers on the internet. So this is my big challenge. And I love challenging myself because every time that I challenge myself, I start to improve my, my English and my, my personal life, my professional life too. So this I, I've seen I've seen that the, this concept of challenge is like a rep repeating element in your in your experience as a student and also as a content creator. It um, is. What, why is that? And if you also want to share how what you think about not being challenged, being in your comfort zone, and why? Yeah, the, I, I love a, a quote. I don't know who said that, but I, I get for myself uh, that said, the comfort zone is a dry land where, it's not, where nothing's grow. So I believe that. I believe in the, in the comfort zone, nothing good happens. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you're just living your life. You're not doing something interesting. So what would it look like for like traditional English learner to be in their comfort zone, in their English learning journey? What would that look like? Yeah, I, I would say that uh, when you are in your comfort zone, it's something like you are swimming in a, in a swimming pool. Very, you don't have waves, you don't have anything that uh, danger. And then mm. you are just, for example, in English, you are just learning vocabulary, you are just learning expressions, but you don't open your mouth, you are not speaking with, with anybody, you are not, you know, using the language. So I usually compare this with to swimming in a, in, a, in a pool. It's comfortable. It's okay. I don't have any trouble there. So I have, uh, you know, if I have a problem, I can just hold in the border. So it's easy. And to be out of your comfort zone, I, would, I usually compare uh, with swimming in the ocean. Like in the ocean, you have sharks, you have big fish, you have, uh, it's so deep. So it's danger. But when you are there in that dangerous situation, you will learn and you grow so much. And then when, when you need to go back and swim in, in a, in a, you know, in a swimming pool, it's so amazing because you already are able to swim in the ocean. So I like to compare this type of things because I, I totally believe in that. And for me, you know, to have a podcast and to help people is to swim in the ocean. So to sw swim in the ocean for me, it's like that. And uh, I try to, to challenge myself on a daily basis because I think right now, if you put myself in, you know, to speak with uh, investors or to speak with in front of people, I'm ready because I'm doing things that are difficult also. So I am preparing myself in a different way. So every challenge that you, you give myself, I accept it because I never refuse a good challenge. <laughs> I think this is something that definitely a lot of people, uh, I hope a lot of people get inspired by it because I, I agree, too. it's so incredibly important. Would you say that being where you are today is a result of showing up for your English practice consistently? Were you a good English, diligent English learner? It is, it is. Uh, if you don't practice, if you don't prove your English, it's impossible to improve because, uh, you know, how can I, I'm learning pronunciation. You know, I decided to learn pronunciation this year uh, with you in, in your sound because I was doing the, the podcast and I was like, mm, sometimes my, I noticed that my pronunciation is not the best. So I decided to, to focus on that. If I, if I don't use, you know, if, if, if I don't be in interviews like this, if I don't speak with people, if I don't uh, show up in the in meetings, if I don't use English with my clients, how can I prove my, my new knowledge? How can I use it? How can I know that it's working or not? So I totally believe that you need to put yourself out there, you know, to prove that you are learning. And if you are, you know, struggling with something, no problem. Just step back. And do it again. Try again yeah. until you you get comfortable. Until you get like, oh, I I'm doing a great job. I, I, I'm improving because sometimes it's not easy to to notice that we are improving. Sometimes mm. we got like 
mm, I am like hitting the ceiling. I'm not uh, improving anymore. So it's normal. But as much you you prove your English, as much you you try to use, you will notice that it's it's going to be better and better until you you achieve the level that you want. Yeah, that's good. And 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 let's say someone wants to to do that, but there is something preventing them from do, doing it. Like what would someone who wants to put themselves out there or to practice consistently, like what does someone need to believe in or to feel in order to be able to make that their reality? Great question. Great question. First thing, first thing I think you, you need to believe in yourself that you are capable to do. If you don't believe in yourself, nobody else will. So first thing, you need to believe in yourself. And second, I think it's important. You don't, you don't care about others' opinion, like uh, criticism or like people that, uh, that are not, you know, gentle with you. Because in my own journey, I try to surround myself with uh, positive people, people that uh, will help me, not people that will judge me or things like that. Because uh, to be judged sometimes could, uh, you know, make us to get like stuck because we are thinking about other uh, other people uh, thoughts. So you are like, try to prove somebody else that you are good. So, no, you need to prove yourself that you, you can do it. And yeah. when I, the first time that I put myself in the ocean, you know, to challenge myself was when I was uh, learning Spanish, I decided to record a video just to, you know, to see how it looks like. And I did, and I received a positive feedback. And I got like, mm. wow, it's good. So let me do it. Another video, another video. And then I start to do the same with English too. And I noticed that I start to improve. So because of my, mm. my positive feedback that I received, I noticed that, yeah, I can do that. So I can do more and more and more. And then uh, things start to, to improve because I was surrounded of people that are there to help me, not to criticize me, not to judge me. So don't, don't allow uh, anybody else to, to judge yourself. Just yeah. think that nobody will judge you. You are speaking another language. You are amazing. You are intelligent because you, you know, I don't know the, the percentage of the percentage of people that don't speak a, a second language. You are doing it. So you are mm -hmm. good. It's much higher than those who speak two languages and more. Yeah, exactly. So, exactly. Sometimes yeah. people are so afraid to speak with natives in, in, in the US, for example, but they just speak English and you speak sometimes English, Spanish, and sometimes Portuguese. Sometimes I know people that speak five language languages. Yeah. So you're great. Absolutely. And, you know, I liked what you said. I have a lot of students and, you know, who, who want to be content creators or business owners that who understand that showing up in English is critical for their business and success. You know, both you and I are into digital marketing and content is so incredibly important and especially video because people really connect with you over video and <clears throat> they're afraid to show up on video because they're afraid of the criticism. But in fact, what you are saying that once you became content creator, it, not only that you didn't receive that negative feedback, which again might happen to some and that is okay. It's part of the world. It's part of the work. But you say that actually it was the opposite. And because of that, that actually gave you more confidence instead of, so it's, it's, it's counterintuitive because people would be afraid but you're saying, no, actually, it would build up your confidence. It was my fault to, you know, to do what I'm doing right now. You know, to show up on the camera and start to speak with, you know, other students, English teachers, entrepreneurs, uh, people that uh, na natives also. It gives me more energy and more, you know, power more uh, you know self-confidence and everything so sometimes what scares you is the fool that you need to improve your english so yes if you take this as a good thing you will do amazing things 
And I noticed that your students, uh, they, they have this feeling to, I need to show up in, on camera. I need to speak. I need to, to record videos. I saw people yeah. on, on New Sound that record 90, 90 videos. 90 I mean, videos. Like, That's a daily wow. video challenge. Yes. Yeah. Amazing. And this is amazing. I saw people that never spoke English before speaking. Like, yeah. it's yes. incredible. Yeah, because you prove to yourself when you do these things that are challenging, you just prove to yourself that it's possible. You build confidence in the person you want to become. Let me ask you this. What are the most interesting things that you've learned from interviewing all these great people and teachers? I, I learn new things every day. Uh, every interview, I am learning something new. But I think the, the most valuable thing that I learned was you need to care about other people. When you are giving, just giving, good things come back to you. So uh, I noticed that when I start to record, uh, you know, interviews and, and speak uh, on YouTube, because I receive a lot of feedback like this, Fred, I was stuck. I just g gave up to study English because your video, because your, your podcast, I decided to go back again and study because I noticed that I noticed that's possible. I noticed that this I can do it. So because of that, uh, people start to study again. So I, I have learned that if you give, good things come back to you. So I think uh, I became a more generous person because of that, I think. So mm -hmm. it's not just related to English, you know, uh, it's changed our life in, in, in general. So, uh, and I think like the, is that I, I became a, a better person because of that. Yeah. Uh, right now, I, you know, I'm passionate about to help people. And uh, I think this is, is greatest than me. You know, it's, uh, it became my, my, how can I say, my main goal, my purpose yeah. in life to help people in, in the way I can. So I think that that's it. I became a, a more generous person. This is so profound because it really is about, because when you're generous, not only that it, it makes everything worthwhile a lot more, you put the focus on the other person. And when you focus on the other person, then you stop caring so much about your own performance all the time, right? You don't pick on every single mistake or mispronunciation because you're all geared towards the other person. And what do they need from me right now? How can I show up for them so that they feel listened to and understood and that they can understand exactly what I'm trying to say? And when that is the focus, it takes away all the negative self-talk and all the, you know, being self-indulgent in your own thinking and you're focusing on the other person. So beyond the act of giving and providing help to others, I think also having that intention changes your entire English experience, which leads me to talking about mindset. Cause I know that inside of new sound, um, you know, one of the things that you were working on in addition to pronunciation was mindset. What is a healthy mindset for an English learner? I think mindset, mindset is one of the most important things because if you don't develop this, this skill, you know, to, to Actively have develop. confidence. Yeah, yeah, you need to act and develop. Because if you don't have confidence in yourself, if you don't have a, you know, a good mindset to, to learn and to know that this is a journey, it's, it's a long journey. It's not just a short one. So yeah. when you notice that mindset is important, uh, and you start to work on that. And, uh, I've, I've heard people saying that, uh, one of the, the best models of uh, new sound is the mindset because of that, because people are, afraid to speak they are they uh, don't have confidence and when they notice that uh, it's everything is related on me i just need to change my the way i think i just need to think differently and mm -hmm. then things will start to improve i can come back to my to myself in 2018 i was shy i was a person that uh, was not a good communicator i'm still thinking that i'm not so good at it, but I'm working on it. So when I start to notice that mindset is important and I start to develop this skill to think in, you know, in a good way, to believe in myself first and then start to try to help others in the same way, I notice that this is the key. 
uh, if you you can know a lot about English, you can know grammar, you can know pronunciation, you can know uh, everything. But if you don't have confidence to speak, you won't speak. Mm-hmm. I see a lot of people like this. I see, I see people that if you ask something about grammar, they know everything. They know all the rules. They know everything. But you say, hello, how are you? And then they just get stuck. You know, they don't open their mouth. And they are great. They know a lot of things. They, they are smart. But they have like a, a thing that is the mind. Uh, just getting there in the same place. And, and then, as I mentioned, if you don't have a good mindset, you, can, you can't move. You can do anything. So I think mindset is one of the most important things. And uh, when I noticed that and I started to develop my English, I start to uh, encourage people to, you know, to do the same, work in the, in the mind before, and then your English is going to be better. And then I, you know, there is something interesting. I, I, ha- I had help uh, a lady from Spain. She is over the 60s years old. She's retired. She didn't have any reason to, to speak English. And she was like, uh, I can't do it. I'm too old to do that. I'm so, you know, I, and I start to, to help her. Like, no, you can't do it. No, you are good. You are smart. Record a video and you see. And then she started to record one video, two videos. In a few weeks, she was speaking very well because English Amazing. was there. She was just yes. great, you know? Yes. So yes. Like- I've seen that so much. Like, you know, I've had a student who studied for 12 years English and she wasn't able to speak her. People around her would make fun of her. And then inside of New Sound in two months, she was like making long videos, yeah. you know, and talking about it. The English is there for the most part for a lot of people. They just need yeah, to and- have that confidence. Even if you if you if you think okay my English is not good, try it. You see that it's like freedom when you. Yeah. Uh, I'm a person that I tell everybody record videos. This will help you to go outside of, of the comfort zone. Yeah. Videos are amazing, and now you have you know other thing that that I totally believe that everybody needs to have English English learners. You need to record videos and you need to have a YouTube channel or an Instagram account just to share yeah. your, your, your journey. You don't need to be a YouTuber or things like that. But if you show up on camera, expose yourself, you see that uh, it's not a big of a deal. Yeah. Everybody can do it. Absolutely. I always say, like, if you're you, you're an English learner, you become an, a content creator. My students are content creators, ultimately. Let's talk about pronunciation for a sec. How has pronunciation work helped you build your fluency? As I mentioned before, at the beginning, when I start my, my channel, I noticed that I need pronunciation because I never work on, on this. I, I was speaking, but, you know, the way I, I, I can, but I noticed that sometimes I'm not clear enough. I need to, you know, improve this aspect. And I start to study with you. I start new sound. And then I, I noticed that pronunciation is it's habit. It's a habit. You need to build this habit. And then you will start to, to put these little things uh, in your communication. And then you will start to improve. So I noticed that after to, to, to focus on pronunciation, my English start to get more clear, you know, because sometimes I was speaking with, with people and I noticed that they got like this and uh, trying to understand what I, I was, yeah, what I was saying. And I noticed that because, you know, if I just change a, a few things in my, in a word, it could become another word. Like we have words that are really similar, similar. In English, uh, and we learned this uh, with you in the in new sound, like the minimal pairs, and we we need to hear and distinguish uh, the difference. Because when we are talking, uh, sometimes, for example, with me, I have a problem to d in the end of word. Sometimes I didn't say this, and then the word becomes another word, and could be challenging, could be challenging to understand. And my clarity is not, uh, 
it will be effect. So uh, when I focus on my pronunciation, I start to notice that this is a habit. I need to build this habit. And mm -hmm. then now I, I'm aware about the sounds. So even when I make a mistake, I know that I made a mistake. So I start to, okay, let's correct yeah. this. Because I know that's how do, not, how do you practice? Right. How do you practice a pronunciation? So let's say a sound that you feel like you need to change or incorporate. How do you practice it? I usually, uh, I love videos. So I usually go to Yuglish to see mm -hmm. how the words pronounce it. And then I, I try to repeat as much as I can. Like mm -hmm. the word again and again and again until uh, it becomes more natural to me uh, in my mind. Because, for example, I have a problem to pronounce words that are long in English, like, for example, responsibility, things like that. I, I am, sometimes I, I notice that I make mistakes. For example, uh, I was speaking with uh, somebody a few days ago. No, no, it wasn't beyond. I was speaking with uh, Christina, I think. Yeah, Christina. And I need to say a word, and then I, I said responsibility. And all of a sudden I got like, okay, responsibility. So I, I remember this sound, this sound. Of course, responsibility is not wrong, mm -hmm. but I am working in my, in my accent. So in my American accent. So I noticed that, okay, say it again. And then I, I said the right, the right way that I want, uh, because I am aware about the sound now. So yeah. I think. Studying pronunciation helped me to be aware about the sound and build new habits. And then uh, I think I'm uh, I'm conscious about about the sound now, and I'm still need to to improve it. But for example, the TA that was a big challenge for me as a as a Brazilian. We don't have this sound; it's really challenging sometimes. I start to develop it, and uh, I notice that it's getting better. So. Uh, I noticed that the sounds are coming. Yeah. Uh, I love that. All of them. <clears throat> the sounds are coming. This is really how it is, right? Like you practice and you practice and you practice and then, you know, you don't feel it. You don't necessarily use it. And then all of a sudden they're coming or all of a sudden what comes out of your mouth was, is like, yeah, it, it actually is how it sounds in my head. And I hear it like that for the first time, which is the beauty of this type of work. And of course, it helps you build confidence. And I also, I also try to get difficult words, you know, to, because I have like a, a difficulty to learn. I don't know why, but sometimes I learn something. I forgot very, very easily. So I try to get difficult words that I really struggle with. And then I try to repeat as much as I can. I try to use in my speech as much as I can. And if I have a chance to use that word, I will do it. And then I can, I can see the, the, the feedback in, in someone else's face, you know? Mm. So, okay, I, I did it wrong or I did it good. So yeah, let's keep I love that. work on it. You're so attentive and sensitive to what's going on around you. Yeah, I need to be. I need to be because as I mentioned, I, I forgot things very quickly. So I try to put things in the more visual way that I can, because I'm mm. so, and this is the thing that I think is really important. You need to know what is your best way to learn, because yeah. I know that I'm, I'm a vision person. If you put graphics for me, I will understand and retain everything. But if I just uh, see, for example, if I try to read something, a book or something, it's not the same for me. I have yeah. more. It's more difficult for me to, to learn. All right, Fred, thank you so much for everything that you shared. It's all so incredibly valuable and really shows the, the very interesting, courageous journey that you took in this English learning experience. I'm going to ask you the same question that you asked me when you interviewed me for your channel, which, by the way, we're going to link to my interview on Fred's channel um, so you can definitely watch it. Um, what would you recommend someone who feels stuck or in the plateau in their English learning journey? Great question. It I think yours. you need to challenge yourself. <laughs> <laughs> challenge yourself as much as you can. Put yourself in danger, dangerous situations. And you will start to improve your English because no, 
as I mentioned, uh, the comfort zone is a dry land where nothing grows. So don't be there. Step out of the comfort zone. Start to do things that really scares you. And you will see. You, you, can, you can message me later. Fred, it doesn't work if it doesn't work for you. Because I, I'm a proof of it. Uh, I start to do this type of things. I start to challenge myself on a daily basis. And things start to happen to me in business, in English, in every aspect of my life. Uh, if you challenge yourself, your English is going to improve, uh, you see. So I think this is the main, main thing. Uh, challenge yourself, look in your mindset, uh, surround yourself uh, by good people, positive people like Hadar. So you see that uh, your English is going to improve because you have people to support you, you have people to help you and you will grow because uh, people will help you to to grow so i think that's it i love that thank you so so much fred and where can people find you and follow you thank you so much Hadar, for having me and uh my youtube channel is called silvercast you can search on youtube and on instagram is the same silvercast is my is my is my brand <laughs> So you can find me on YouTube and on Instagram too. So, and we're just... definitely going to link to uh, your channel, your Instagram account, and also to the interview we had on your channel. And um, I wish you many, many years of prolific create content creation. Uh, push all possible boundaries, challenge yourself, and I have no doubt that you will continue seeing success and uh, feeling accomplished as you already feel and even more. Thank you so much, Hadar, from the bottom of my heart. And uh, I think I will because I am, uh, I am like following your, you know, I look at, at your contents and I, I got like, this is a good thing. I can, mm -hmm. I want to do something similar. You are a great inspiration for me. So, and this, it's helping me a lot to, you know, to improve my the quality of my content and uh, the desire to help other people. So, yeah, thank you so much for my being honor. this inspiration and for helping me in, you know, to improve my English and to gain more confidence to do what I'm doing. So thank you so much for being this inspiration. Thank you so much, Fred. Thank you. Uh, take care and I wish you all the best. Thank you. See you soon. I hope you enjoyed this conversation. Fred, thank you so much for your time. Remember that we also have an interview on Fred's channel, so go check it out. Have a beautiful, beautiful rest of the day. Let us know in the comments what you think, and I'll see you next week in the next video. Bye.